question for you. Why go where the action is? We, like Jonah, as God's people, tend to run either towards or away from where the action is. Today, I'm going to show you where the action is, why we should, as believers in Jesus Christ, run to and not away from it. So let's get started. Welcome back to Reason for Truth, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo. This is Reason for Truth, where you know the truth comes first, the reasons, they come last, but where we're always and constantly learning, because when we stop learning, we stop teaching, or at least stop teaching well, and we don't want to do that. We want to make sure we teach well and not not well. Did you get that? All right, let's get started. I have two specific areas of mission, but the first main mission is to equip young people living out their faith, and adults, I should say, but really specifically young people to live out and grow in their faith effectively in a world intent on dismantling their faith. The second mission is uh, is a bit different, and it's some, somewhat opposite in that it focuses on the unsaved, right? It's a great commission, Matthew 28. It's all part of the same mission God gives us. And this second mission is to reach the unsaved, is everybody's calling. It's called, again, the Great Commission. You can read all about the Great Commission. It's really the last thing Jesus left us before he ascended into heaven. So I want to focus on the latter day, which is, you know, the reaching the unsaved, well, this is what I call where the action is. All right, while the action is found in reaching the lost, it can be at youth as well. They're pretty rough. You're dealing with, by the way, a lot of times with youth who see things relative. And you're trying to teach without a foundation of absolute truth and absolute morality. There is a lot of action there. But today I'm just going to focus on reaching the unsaved. I think personally the unsaved are quite often a lot easier to reach than those who think they're Christians, who perhaps are not made really a solid case I mean, it's uh, for Christianity. But listen, while the action is found in reaching the lost, the lost are messy people. Why are, so, why are they so messy? Well, in today's world, they're found inside and outside the church, both, but mostly they're the unchurched. I like meeting new unsaved people that the Lord brings to me in an effort to share the Christian faith with them, even when in a challenging environment. I've been in some crazy environments. My uh, my friends and my kids want me to, to do a series on some of my stories. Perhaps I'll start doing that a little bit here and there. I want to be clear that the challenging uh, folks that we are a breed all their own, but we could still we're still called to reach them and to encourage them in the gospel to accept Jesus Christ and to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ and it, who instructs our steps. He gives us the scripture, the words to share. They don't have that. They're like walking around without a compass in the middle of the jungle. And it's our job to be courageous enough, obedient to God, and it, uh, listen, listening to the Holy Spirit when he brings these people to us that he, he called to share our faith with. Sadly, most Christians only care to work with other Christians and, you know, listen, hang out with other Christians. Our best friends should always be believers. Those are the core facts. Uh, you know, that's the core central part of who we need to rely on for advice and encouragement because their worldview is Christ-centered. You don't really want to lean on somebody too much who doesn't have a Christ-centered worldview because you're going to get a worldly advice. And there's a, by the way, there's some there's a lot of value in worldly advice or advice outside of someone who was saved. Look at Moses and Jethro. When Moses set up the, the legal court system, he got that whole set up from Jethro before he was saved, before he became a man following God. But sadly, again, most Christians only care to work with the Christians inside the church in the bubble, I call it. And they hand off the job of evangelism to the professionals, the pastors, the pair church, and to other people, you know, ministry people, to carrying out evangelism. Look, that's all of our jobs. I'm here at Reason for Truth. I'm here to equip you. That's, <laughs> that's why we stopped, why we started EquipTheAcademy.com. It's not for my job to share Christ with the entire world. It is if God brings them to me, but it's, it's not going to happen. It's, it's going to take the whole body of Christ to reach the world. God works through us. This is the central reason why Christianity is in a state, I believe, today, because we as Christians, for the most part, either over-accommodate sinners to avoid offending them altogether, and if we are healthy and confident in our own faith, we ought to be reaching the lost world to pre prepare children to gradually interact with the lost world as they're is able to do so. The, the, you know, listen, they're going to interact with these people anyways when we get older. So if we fail to do this, we, we fail to raise our children wisely and well, and we end up raising spiritually weak children, unable to live out their faith in a secular culture. So if we wait to share our faith with those we feel comfortable with, 
where I think in many cases we end up missing the multitude of the lost who the Lord places in our path. It's frightening to share the Christian faith, by the way, with our Muslim friends, how about our homosexual, gay friends, and so on and so forth, especially government officials. I mean, who wants to do that? They could get put in jail. How about those in the federal or state governments, right, depending on the state you live on? But the federal government, certainly. It seems to me that most difficult people to share Christian faith with, in my opinion, are those who call themselves or think they're Christians, but really in name only. Yeah, listen, but have no real personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's often quite easy to share your faith with the lost because they realize something's missing in their life. When you get a super, super, what we would call super liberal people in one way or the other, they're often, they're often open to hearing about anything. <laughs> That's how they got to where their thinking is, you know, today. So who should, you know, we reach out to and share our faith with? Well, the answer is simple in that if you don't see these people, simply pray to God to bring them to you. I promise that in a short period of time, if not immediately, unless you're spiritually blind, God's going to bring them to you. It's going to be unquestionable. And the better question is, what would Jesus do or say, you know, with what I'm doing and what I'm going to say? Well, the Holy Spirit's going to give you the words you need. And you need to be in the Word of God because He's going to recall some of those scriptures as well. But He's also going to give you the wisdom. He's going to help you out. The Holy Spirit's real, man. I mean, He's going to really kick into action. But we tend to not kind of see the Holy Spirit as like He sits in the corner on the lounger chair and will watch television. You know, he's not, it's not true. That's, that's wrong thinking. That's wrong, wrong biblical thinking. The answer can be found in Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 14, which defines who are those that we should share our faith with. And it says this, As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he rose up, that's Matthew, and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors, who were not very well liked, they were pretty much the center of the sinners, and and then it says, and sinners, meaning other sinners from all walks of life, came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Matthew 9 uh, chapter 9, verses uh, 9 to 14. Uh, by the way, all of us were sinners. We all are sinners, everyone except for Jesus Christ. I just love it. You know, Jesus, you got to wonder, like, what were these people thinking? I understand what Jesus is thinking, uh, because the Bible kind of explains that in from Genesis to Revelation. But what were these people thinking? Like, hey, man, this guy's got truth. I mean, listen to him. He speaks one who speaks with authority. That's pretty wild. Listen, in the eyes of the Pharisees, though, sinners were those who, whose occupations rendered them ceremonially unclean and not to be associated with. Oh, hold on a second. Really? I get you. Listen, you don't want to go on vacation, perhaps, with them, but we certainly are not to disassociate ourselves with them. Now, the Pharisees, they fasted twice a week in what is called conspicuous piety. Today, you and I are called to carry ourselves with dignity and cleanliness, clean speech, action, and thought, but not this conspicuous piety, which means we kind of just act by one. Everybody know I'm a Pharisee, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, and therefore I have to act this way. It's called a veneer. We're not called to put ourselves in a compromising situation, by the way, either. I and mean, that's not what I'm asking you with the lost. Listen, if you want to go down and, and share Christ with uh, prostitutes and in other places, drug-laden places. You got to be real careful. You got to think and pray through that and make sure that you're prepared and with people who know what they're doing in that environment. Yes, sometimes that is fine, and that's those are the extreme cases, by the way. But yes, sometimes that is it's a fine line to walk. So use biblical wisdom, uh, pray your way through that, use discernment, not your emotions when reaching others for Christ. So we we need to be discerning. That's the bottom line. It, it wise and careful and alert, and, and we need to be equipped when sharing our faith with those who we consider to be very lost. To take it a step further, we should always keep one eye open, be discerning, aware of compromise in our own lives, and the fact that, that the person we are sharing our faith with is also, you know, listen, they're on the outside, and not as a believer. They're not to be trusted on the inside. God wants everyone to be saved and to fully understand the truth. There's only one God, and there's only one way that people can reach God. And that way is through Jesus Christ, who is a man who gave himself up, fully God, fully man, to pay for everybody's sin. 
for us to have eternal salvation. And this is the message that was given to us just the right time. First Timothy 2, 4 to 6. It's the ERV. I just kind of paraphrase a little bit in there. It's our first calling as parents to equip our children biblically and otherwise. For the world, they, they have to, and have in many cases, already inherited. But it, also, it's, secondly, it's our calling to interact with the more dirty clothes in the hamper, meaning the lost, the messy people of the world, sinners like you and me, but sometimes a lot worse in terms of their situations they put themselves in uh, for this, with the salvific blood of Jesus Christ and relationship with the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, we have what they want. We have what they need in their emptiness. Their hearts are empty. They know it. They're just so lost. They, they almost reject it because it's so clean. It's so, you know, listen, you could be freezing cold. It doesn't mean you want to pick up a hot plate, right? It's going to be so shocking to you. Little by little, we have to come into them and begin that warm that plate and turn the, you know, listen, turn the heat up or vice versa as needed to share the gospel message. Yes, it's scary. It's uncomfortable and uh, for us, uh, but it's dangerous if we don't share the gospel. And it's, uh, it could even be unsafe at times. We want to be discerning, as I said. I'm not saying to put yourself in harm's way. I just want to reiterate that. And, uh, you know, but I am asking you to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation at times. It could be at work or the neighborhood, the supermarket, your neighbor, um, again, uh, the Lord, whoever he places in front of you, the power of the Holy Spirit, the helper. Is there, he's going to help you through that process. You must be in the Word of God daily, as I said earlier. You may, as, as well on occasion, lead someone to Christ. But more often than not, you're going to plant seeds in the person that the next faithful Christian, you know, will have the opportunity to take the next steps. The way God works. Some, sometimes He calls you to plant seeds. Sometimes He calls you to lead others to Christ. So let's remember that to accept that, that the Holy Spirit's the only one that could change the heart. We can't do that. Keep that in mind. That's a quintessential truth. Listen, we only do our part in leading people to the Savior. The rest of God, the rest is God's doing through Jesus Christ. And in the end, we're going to be stretched. We're going to be a bit tired out, but exhilarated to be used by God through us. Listen, when God runs through us, when He works through us, the Holy Spirit is flowing through us. And this is why we go where the action is. Listen, in closing, let's make sure we do a couple things. Bam! As I said, Gonzio Sinistro, knock out that, that subscribe button down there. Hit that little alert bell. You don't want to miss any of these. Little Maria, come out, maybe bring you a little pizza. I've said that in the past. It'll be virtual. It won't be real, so it's not going to taste as good. I tell you, ain't nothing like a good New York or an Italian pizza from authentic mm, Italian pizzeria. But at least the bell, eh, at least you can think about it. So before you go, also join my community, StephenGarafalo.com. It's free. You can support us if you like. There, five dollars a month. And that don't, you don't have to, but if you like to, and there you'll get this podcast one to three days early, right off the pot platform in audio version, and uh, you're, you're gonna love it. So, anyways, check it out. Join us. We'll see you over there. I'll be your host, Stephen Garafalo. It is is your reason for truth for today. <music>